Hey guys, how's it going? I'm Aiden. I'm Will Brockett. And we're going to talk to you today about photosynthesis and cellular respiration. Now photosynthesis is the process by which a plant takes in CO2, water, and sunlight and produces glucose and oxygen. Now there are two stages to this process. The first is light reactions. And the second is the carbon cycle. Now the light, I'm going to start you off with the light reactions. This is the first step of photosynthesis. And what happens is the sun, see here, releases photons, which the, with the, which the plant absorbs in the chloroplasts. These photons excite the electron in the plant. What happens is there's a, the water molecule which the plant takes in loses its hydrogen molecule to, and it is left with oxygen. This hydrogen is sent across the membrane to, and forms a concentration gradient on the other side, very similar to oxidative phosphorylation. These hydrogens then pass, pass back through the synthase where they help produce ATP and NADPH are the final products of light reactions. At the same time, this electron that's been excited is going through the electron transport chain and is helping to create also ATP and NADPH. Now these two products, these are the two final products of light reactions, and when this is done, they're sent over to the Calvin cycle. Uh, so the next step is the Calvin cycle, which is a light independent reaction which takes place on the stroma of the plant. Uh, the first step of the Calvin cycle um, is carbon fixation. And what that is, is that's when three carbon dioxide um, bonds to three RUBP, uh, which is a five carbon sugar. This forms a six carbon sugar, which then splits in two to form two three carbon sugars. Uh, the first is energized by ATP from the light reaction to form PGA and ADP. The second is reduced by NADPH to form NADP plus and G3P. Now G3P is the final product of the Calvin cycle. When the Calvin cycle completes itself twice, there will be two G3P, which is equivalent to glucose, C6H12O6. The ADP and NADP plus are then reused in the light reactions. Now you see C6H12O6 and 6O2 are the final products of photosynthesis. And in a plant which does both photosynthesis and cellular respiration, these two products would be sent and they would go through cellular respiration where the final product is ATP, or energy, which the plant uses to maintain its function. Now, if you look at the equations, the, this is the, these two equations are exactly the opposite of each other. So the products of uh, cellular respiration are 6CO2 and 6H2O. So if you switch the equations around, if they're the exact same process, essentially in reverse. Now, that's it for photosynthesis. Those are the two uh, parts. Now, we're going to talk to you about a genetic mitochondrial disorder called K K Kern-Sayers syndrome, or KSS. Um, now, KSS uh, forms from mutated mitochondria, um, which is passed down solely from the mother's genes. There are a bunch of symptom symptoms of this. The one that generally manifests itself first is called bilateral ptosis, which is essentially when the patient loses control of their eyelids. Now, their eyelids droop down, preventing them preventing vision, and it happens in both eyelids, so the patient is essentially blind because they can't open their eyes. Some other symptoms include deafness, muscle weakness, and d diminished stature, which means that patients with this disease are generally shorter than a normal person. Uh, these symptoms usually manifest themselves uh, before the age of 20, um, and because it's a genetically inherited disease, there's no known cure. Now this disease is related to cellular respiration because it takes place in the mitochondrial DNA. It's a mutation of this DNA. What happens is there are these transport proteins in the electron transport chain in oxidative phosphorylation. And these transport proteins allow hydrogen molecules to pass across the membrane and create a concentration gradient. These hydrogens are essential to the creation of ATP and H2O, which are the final products, which are two of the products of cellular respiration. Now when these transport proteins have this mutation, it prevents them from creating enough ATP. So there's a base, essentially, the process completes itself, but it produces much less ATP than the body needs. Uh, this results in impaired energy production by mitochondria. Um, the energy deficit um, takes a heavy toll on tissues that rely heavily upon aerobic respiration, such as the brain, uh, skeletal and cardiac muscles, and sensory organs, as well as kidneys. This is why people who have KSS tend to have diminished uh, sight and hearing, as well as muscle weakness, because these uh, parts of the body which are so reliant on this ATP created in cellular respiration simply aren't getting the ATP they need to function properly. Uh, laboratory studies have shown that there's an elevated uh, level of lactate and pyruvate uh, due to the increased reliance on aerobic uh, metabolisms um, resulting from uh, decreased energy. Um, 
This also results in a decreased ratio of ATP to ADP. Now, while this disease is very serious for those who have it, it's very rare. There are only between 300 and 400 cases reported worldwide. However, they highlight the importance of properly functioning mitochondria in the body. So that's it for this week's lesson. We've uh, run you through photosynthesis and cellular respiration. Uh, thank you. I'm Aiden. I'm Will Brockett. Thanks for listening. Hope you enjoyed.